I swiftly removed my shirt, draping it over my chest, and gazed at the discarded fabric on the floor, my heart composing a symphony of anxiety. Sensations of bugs had pricked my skin as I donned the shirt, yet none emerged from its crevices. Despite this, my skin still crawled, and adrenaline coursed through my veins, teasing my nerves. Bugs, minuscule creatures, had invaded every corner of my existence, infiltrating my thoughts with their ceaseless presence. They pervaded each moment of my day, no respite in sight. A sip from my drink summoned bugs up the straw, invading my mouth. Every bite of food heralded their descent into my throat, gnawing their way through my intestines. During my showers, they emerged from drain holes, swarming my feet and nestling in my hair. Even in slumber, bugs from my pillowcase infiltrated my ears, wriggling out from my nose, mouth, and eyes. Thus, I found myself ensnared in a dreadful plight, haunted by phantasmal insects. Though I knew them to be figments of my imagination, each sensation of their tiny legs skittering across my skin drove me to frantic bouts of scratching and slapping. In moments of maniacal frenzy, I'd spent hours mutilating my inflamed epidermis, blood trickling from my wounds, providing a ghastly playground for the persistent pests. I attempted to drown them, immersing myself in scalding bathwater for hours on end. Yet they persisted, swimming and multiplying with alarming rapidity. Their relentless efforts to reach me, akin to a determined voyage to an island, proved fruitless. They would never succumb to the water's depths. Eventually, I resigned myself to their presence. Though their constant pricks and tingles remained impossible to ignore, I learned to suppress them, cultivating a sense of calm. It became a battle of wills, wherein I would suppress every itch and tickle until it became unbearable. Gradually, I honed my ability to endure. One fateful night, as I lay in my dimly lit chamber, striving to quell the tickles on my skin, I felt them. A sensation behind my eyelids. They warmed their way through the delicate skin, forcing my eyes open, an unsettling intrusion. They're not real, I repeated, a mantra to safeguard my sanity amidst the creeping sensation. However, the motion persisted, and with it, discomfort prickled my eyeballs, compelling me to rush to the bathroom mirror. Standing on the icy, tiled floor, I manipulated my eyelids, stretching them outward and tilting my head to inspect beneath. Cream-colored maggots wriggled across my naked eyeballs, irritating the delicate sclera and prompting tears to well up. Scratched them out, an impulsive urge echoed in my mind, but I resisted. I knew better than to succumb to the belief that these parasites were real. Despite my inquiries to strangers about the vermin crawling upon my body, their responses remained consistent. Confusion, concern, or outright rejection. That night, sleep eluded me, and dawn brought forth a new manifestation of insects to accompany my weariness. Today, the imagined bugs took the form of mosquitoes, engulfing me in a swarm of bites and buzzing. Each tiny sting provoked an insatiable itch, rendering my skin inflamed, yet devoid of visible evidence. Trapped within my own home for days, food supplies dwindling, I found myself unable to cease the incessant scratching. Leave me alone. I cried out, swatting futilely at the phantom mosquitoes, only to find them returning persistently. Pinpricks of blood adorn my face and limbs, urging me to disregard their bites. Collapsing onto the living room sofa, I held my breath, hoping for respite. Suddenly, all ceased. The buzzing, the biting, the itching, leaving behind only the burning sensation of inflamed flesh. I scanned the room for any sign of the mosquitoes, but they had vanished. Trembling, I rose from the couch, gazing at the blood-stained fabric, a testament to my futile struggles. With the temporary absence of bugs, I knew I had mere minutes before their return. Despite my oozing wounds, time was of the essence. I ventured out cautiously, intending to procure only instant noodles and water wary of drawing attention should the insects reappear. My shoes and coat were on, and I was out the door before I had time to let my conflicting thoughts settle. The grocery store was a two-block walk from my one-bedroom apartment, 
and I anticipated making it a short walk. I speed walked the whole way, not too fast so as to not draw attention to myself. The last thing I needed was for the police to be called for a complaint against my erratic behavior. It didn't help that I was covered head to toe in fresh scratches either that they'd probably mistake me for some street side tweaker. Entering the supermarket, I was greeted by its harsh fluorescent glow, yet the insects plaguing my mind remained dormant. Maintaining a facade of composure, I traversed the vibrant aisles teeming with merchandise, my gaze fixed upon the ground, avoiding interaction with fellow patrons lest they discern my inner turmoil. Conscious of my disheveled appearance, dark under-eye circles contrasting with pallid, scar-ridden skin, teeth chattering with anxiety, unkempt hair veiling my countenance, I felt akin to a vagabond. Indeed, I resembled one. Spying the instant noodles, I made a beeline for them, clutching a package tightly as I hastened to procure a case of water. Yet, a tickle on my ankles shattered my fragile calm. Not now, I pleaded silently. Glancing downward confirmed my fears. Long-legged creatures scuttled about, creeping upwards with chilling intent. Among the imagined pests that plagued my mind, spiders reigned supreme, their phantom fangs piercing my flesh, injecting fictitious venom into my veins. Every agonizing moment was palpable, yet I dared not react. Driven by urgency, I disregarded the silent stares of onlookers as I raced through the market, the arachnids encroaching further with each passing second. Arriving at the checkout with my provisions, I found myself in a state of visible distress, met by the incredulous gaze of the teenage cashier, her blonde hair wisping about her braces. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm in a rush, sorry. I spoke back concisely as an indication for her to hurry it along. But her procession continued painfully slow as the spiders made their way to my thighs. Once back on the street, I hastened homeward with all the speed I could muster. The spiders bounced along with each stride, until finally one dared to sink its fangs into my flesh. It triggered a frenzy as they all unleashed their venom with savage force. Fuck. I couldn't contain the cry of agony. Bursting through my front door with reckless abandon, I paid no heed to the damage inflicted upon the wall by the impact of the doorknob. In that moment, nothing mattered but the relentless onslaught of the insects. I needed to regain control, to quell the rising panic. Once more, I buried my face in the cushions of my sofa, striving for stillness and steadying my breath. Inhale, they will cease soon. Exhale, just a bit longer. Inhale, why won't they relent? Exhale, it's unbearable. Then came another sensation, the buzzing from within my ears. Something wriggled its way out, vibrating fiercely within my ear canal. Zip, something emerged. Startled, I jerked my head to the side as the relentless buzzing persisted. Zip, zip, zip. Hornets erupted from my ears, swarming around my head, their thin wings creating a cacophony of noise. Maintain composure. Don't let them unnerve you. How ironic. Bug, indeed. A queasy sensation churned in my stomach, akin to spoiled butter, and bile surged in my throat. No. I feared startling them. Despite my efforts to suppress it, the vomit surged forth uncontrollably, spewing from my lips. Yet it wasn't the remnants of a meal. It couldn't be. I hadn't eaten. So what was expelled from my mouth? Beetles. An array of colors and sizes. Scarabs, stags, longhorns, gushed forth like water from a burst pipe. I was powerless to halt the onslaught. Moths fluttered from my nostrils. Worms wriggled from my eye sockets, red ants emerged from my nether regions, and cicadas ensnared themselves in my hair. The onslaught was overwhelming. The spiders bit, the hornets stung, the red ants kindled a fiery agony, the cicadas and moths tormented. The worms left a slimy trail down my cheeks, and then everything faded to black in an instant. Under the pale glow of fluorescent lights, Enveloped in pristine white sheets, and amidst the rhythmic beep of machines, I found myself in a hospital bed. 
My last memory was of insects skittering in and out of my body's openings, yet now, here I lay. What had transpired? Tubes delivered clear fluids into my veins, an oxygen line snaked its way into my nostrils. Not a single bug in sight. No prickling. No tickling. No buzzing. No biting. A silent prayer echoed within as my skin seared and my head throbbed with a newfound intensity. Struggling to piece together the puzzle of my plight, I reckoned I must have blacked out and inflicted harm upon myself. The hurried click-clack of shoes against linoleum heralded the arrival of a young nurse, petite and sympathetic, as she entered my room, a gentle smile adorning her lips. You're awake. How are you feeling? She inquired her fingers deftly adjusting my myriad of tubes, her gaze evading mine, a gesture oddly comforting. Fine. What happened? I answered bluntly. I could have told her I was having the worst headache of my entire life, and my skin felt like someone peeled it off raw, but I needed to know what happened to me first. She let out a prolonged sigh and put her hands on her hips while she stared at the IV in my arm. Why don't you tell me what happened, sweetheart? According to reports, neighbors found you in the street last night, writhing and shouting about things crawling all over you. Finally meeting my gaze, she arched an inquisitive brow. How could I explain? Admitting to a bout of sleepwalking seemed safer than confessing to a delusional frenzy. Must have been sleepwalking. I ventured, a feeble chuckle escaping my lips, though it rang hollow. Her lips tightened, skepticism etched across her features. Could I please have something for my head? It's excruciating. I redirected, hoping to quell further interrogation. You're already on five milligrams of morphine. Let's wait for the doctor's assessment, she replied, flicking my IV tube before exiting. Moments later, the doctor arrived. A middle-aged man, his round glasses perched on his nose, greeting me with an enthusiastic hello. Each syllable reverberated through my skull urging me to protest. But faced with my inexplicable nocturnal antics, I held my tongue, opting instead to beseech him for relief, gesturing emphatically to my throbbing head. Doubt clouded his expression, mirroring the nurse's concern. I suppose we could arrange a CT scan just to ensure there's no head trauma, offered the doctor. Though it wouldn't alleviate the agony, I welcomed the gesture. Eventually, they administered a mild sedative insufficient to quell the throbbing ache in my skull. Enveloped within the CT machine, I closed my eyes, attempting to shut out the world. Yet, the sensations persisted. Tickles. Impossible. As the machine emitted its cacophony of swooshes and beeps, a faint clicking sound reached my ears. Trapped in the confines of the machine, I felt the unsettling tickling sensation creep across my chest. Then a sudden buzzing shattered the sterile air, reverberating against the machine's walls. In the corner of my vision, I spotted it, a wasp. With alarming precision, it zeroed in on my forehead, its abdomen twitching menacingly between my eyes. And then, a sting. I jolted upright, colliding with the machine's ceiling. Let me out. I demanded, my voice echoing through the chamber. Beyond the glass, Doctors hesitated, but the machine obediently began its ejection sequence. Yet, as I emerged, I was besieged by a swarm of wasps, their stings relentless. Frantically, I leaped from corner to corner, the room a blur amidst the swarm of yellow and black. Hospital staff rushed in, restraining me before I could succumb to the urge to scratch. A sharp prick in my thigh signaled their administration of a sedative, plunging me into dizziness and weakness. The doctor's voice pierced through the haze, urgent and agitated. Once buoyant, his demeanor now betrayed a sense of panic. Pausing in his discussion with a nurse, his gaze fell upon me as my eyes fluttered open. Mr. Muada, I understand you must be weary, he began, his expression tinged with sympathy. We've received concerning news from your CT scan. Have you been experiencing hallucinations, particularly involving insects? How had he discerned the truth so swiftly? Perhaps a slip in my delirium. Regardless, honesty was now imperative. 
Yes, for the past year now, I've been seeing them all over my body, but I can never kill them. They sting and bite me. That's why I scratch off my skin. It hurts, doctor. I already knew what he was going to say. He'd tell me I was suffering from schizophrenia or delusional psychosis or some other strange mental disorder. But instead, he surprised me by saying, I thought you'd say that. You see, he flipped around a file in his hands and revealed to me an X-ray scan of my brain. It looked like any normal human brain except for the little dots that littered the entire organ. Those little dots I'm appalled to even say this are bugs. We've never seen anything like this before. We believe you're suffering from a new rare parasitic disease in which these little organisms tunnel through your brain cells and cause hallucinations. But they aren't regular hallucinations considering you can feel them. We want to conduct a few follow-up tests to make sure the disease isn't contagious or worse could be fatal. This can't be real. Brain bugs. Yes, I felt them now, tickling and biting my brain, causing it to throb and pulsate in pain. How do we get them out? I asked him, praying for a positive answer. That's the thing, we won't fully be able to. These critters are so deep in your membrane that removing them would put you at risk of permanent brain damage. We're so sorry. The doctor's voice cracked, and I almost thought he'd burst into tears. He sounded as upset as I should be. But just remember, the bugs you see are not real, Mr. Moata. He gulped and his jaw quivered as he spoke. But now I had an explanation, a reason for my delusions. Sure, I might be dying, but at least I'm not crazy. I felt the little legs, but I wasn't frightened this time. I welcomed their presence. The tingles were on every inch of my skin. They swallowed me up in a black horde. Ants, they wouldn't hurt me, they were here to comfort me under my condition. My brain soothed for a second, and I knew the guys up there were allowing me a few moments of peace. I was grateful. I was still staring at the doctor when I noticed where he was looking. He was eyeing me up and down with a wild look in his eyes. I don't blame him. I was patient zero of this new dreadful phenomenon. I told him he could go and let the ants cover me like a blanket as I closed my eyes. They didn't try to crawl into my openings. Instead, they just rested on my skin and slept with me. Maybe I would finally find peace. As the doctor made his exit, he was panting like a dog and sweating bullets. What could this disease mean for the rest of the world? Certainly, the man inside the hospital room was going to die. No doubt about it. What man could possibly survive having living insects in his cranium? The doctor was hyperventilating now, he was mortified. He couldn't tell anyone. The man covered in ants lying still in the hospital bed. He saw them too.